Well, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, I should say. Actually, it's it's uh, it's very much morning here for me, and I am in the brave new world of not really dealing with mornings. So this is this is an adaptation. It's actually really exciting to get up and uh, put on you know clothing, makeup. Um, I'm Bonnie Stewart. I am at the University of Windsor, which is in Canada, although just across the border with Detroit. And my colleague, Juliana. Hi, hello from Barcelona. I work at the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya, which uh, actually is Open University of uh, Catalonia in Spain. And we have been looking at the idea of data and how our society is becoming increasingly datafied, but we wanted to just open by also sort of encouraging you to use one of the features of Blackboard Collaborate, which is that this is a live slide. So if you've ever done this before, you actually have the capacity um, to mark on this slide to contribute. And so I'm going to invite you to look at the panel in front of you. And if you see the pencil icon up near the top or the large T typing icon, are you able to um, contribute to the slide and say, Hello, yes, I see somebody writing on it. I would love it if folks could just pop in, where are you today? Um, in real time, I like a sense of who I'm talking with. Oh, hello is right too. <laughs> Bonnie, let me just um, see if I can switch that on because um, because of the large number of attendees, we're using a version of Blackboard where um, collaborators can only chat with us. So the only way for us to make that possible is for us to make everyone a presenter, which we definitely can. It might just take a minute for us to do that with 70 people. Sorry, we'll take a second. Um, we just, it, feel free to put it, I see people are already putting it in the chat and that's great too. We just wanted a chance to have a sense of who's with us here today. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's totally okay. Um, we'll, and we have one point later on where we're going to come back to a slide like this, um, but we can, we can use the chat or we can make the adaptations. It's all good. We're, we're here to do this together. Um, thank you. This is really cool. Seeing all kinds of places. Um, people from all around the world. From all around. Jim in Detroit, waving across the river. Um, <laughs> yes, but you are confined with Bonnie, so the only way of greeting these days. Exactly. Well, right. I Julia, I you, <laughs> you see. Juliana, you, you go ahead and take it forward, okay? Okay, okay. So let's go. Um, sorry for uh, while the people is still participating. Uh, just uh, two words to introduce the problem we are facing. So we entitled this, uh, why we should care about defecation. And we could so, so far from the uh, COVID-19 and all of our current concern, how digitalization education in a hurry, or let's say a hurricane uh, could be uh, this day. The, the, the the actual truth is that the problem of certification is there uh, more than ever for the digital platforms we live by are collecting more and more data and the predictive models could be fed ad infinitum. Uh, so uh, this is the problem that in a data via society, you see on the right side uh, a number of important contributions in, in over this uh, problem. And on the left side, just uh, a, a personal experience, it happened to me that by error, I scanned uh, a picture of my nephew uh, containing uh, a rather some, some, I mean, revolutionary idols. Uh, and uh, Google then offered me a number of products that politically corrected uh, my uh, vision. And, and why uh, was uh, that situation? Because the algorithm, algorithms were programmed by somebody uh, with a, a cultural and geopolitical identity coming from somewhere and uh, training uh, over uh, what is uh, 
uh, his or her vision of red and revolutionary. So this is the problem that uh, depicting data in an enthusiastic way could um, like um, hinder us to think about the problem of uh, gentrification and the uh, several biases uh, embedded in using data massively and, and particularly to enact uh, or, or support behavior. Uh, consumers' behaviors. So uh, this uh, arrives to education. Education could not escape to this panorama. We see uh, two pictures which are really eloquent. In in one, the first one about the Internet of Toys, and the second one about facial tracking and biometric data associated to uh, learners' motivations, uh, cognition, expression, boredom, or whatever. And and all these platforms, the Internet of Things, and the apps we use, we live by, uh, co collect data. And, and the the questions that are arising amongst us is. Uh, can a complex uh, problem like learning be represented uh, by by this data? So uh, it looks that we as educators need to prepare ourselves uh, for these situations and, and to make the right choices, uh, not only in selecting nice technologies as we used to do uh, 10 years ago, but also to reflect uh, about the data we are tracking and collecting and, and what is going to be done with this data. So uh, in a, a research uh, led by Bonnie and me, um, we analyzed 386 articles and, and uh, we uh, kept a screen uh, 132 and we discover that, is, that there is little focus, as you can see in this cloud, this uh, keywords map, uh, most uh, meaning making around data is connected to uh, teachers' data management, uh, using data as opportunity, the technologies and technicalities of using data and the uh, needed literacy, even in the uh, research data management uh, processes. So uh, the problem here is uh, how are we defining uh, being data liter uh, literate? And, and, and the fact that we need several perspectives about this and, and introducing a critical perspective. So I feel that Bonnie will lead us uh, to reflect much more about this uh, in an uh, active session. So uh, the floor to Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. OK. Well here we go. What we would like is your help in taking a look at how um, how we can look at educators' data literacies. And so I'm in the process of attempting to screen share, and I just need to know um, if everyone can see that. We're going to ask you if you would be willing to take a device, hopefully you have a device, um, or to go to a new window on your laptop and go to www.menti.com and use the code 852094 simply to do a very small informal survey for us that would just be part of a pilot where we can get a sense of what educators' data literacies are. Now we recognize that we're not going to have a lot of um, identifying data on the folks here and, um, but, and, and Mentimeter itself does not do a great deal of tracking as a platform. Um, but we would encourage, invite you, if you're willing, to go ahead and um, join Menti. And then we will begin to look at a couple of questions about data literacies. One of the things we wanted to say is that in this kind of small survey of your own data practices, there is no right answer. Um, if you find yourself going, no, don't do that, no, don't know that, that's 100% okay. That actually helps us have a sense of kind of the range of what people do and what people know. And we recognize that folks here at OER are likely to have different data literacies and practices than folks we might gather in a different setting. Um, Juliana, I can only see the Menti screen right now, so can you just let me know, are we ready to move forward? Uh, okay. Let's, uh, you have to you have to move the uh, because you're sharing. You have to move the uh, menti. 
Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move it along. I just want, is there anything in, I can't see the chat. So are folks ready okay, to move sorry, forward? Yes, I am doing, I, yes, sure. Super, thank you. Okay, and I see we have quite a few folks in. Thank you very, very much, folks. And if you just want to watch along, that is absolutely great. Um, question number one. I use digital platforms in my life and work. Well, we're all here. Uh, no, sometimes a lot more lately or for teaching and learning on a regular basis, particularly before this. So if that's a relatively new thing for you, uh, then I would go with the third option a lot more lately. And if that's always been part of your practice, then maybe the fourth option. And again, all options are 100% valid. Okay, just letting the answers come in. Fair enough, there aren't any no's in this group. That makes sense. And everyone should be able to see these responses as, as they come in. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to move us forward. Um, so just 10 more seconds to put in a response if you wish to. Okay. This one, I know what the following mean or do. And this is a set of sliders. So if you have a vague sense of what the term means, you can keep it somewhere towards the disagree side. If you have a, 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 a vague sense that you're pretty solid on that, move towards the agree side. And if you have a strong feeling on either way, you go ahead and put yourself where you want. We will then maybe put open this up so that everybody leaves knowing what these are. Interesting. All right, now we get to the awkward place where if I were in a room with all of you, the intent would be to call on folks and say, OK, so who wants to take data mining? Um, does anybody want to grab the mic and tell us what they think data mining is? I can't see anyone. <laughs> if you want to raise your hand, maybe, um, so that Bonnie can see you. If anybody wants to jump in, we can give you the mic. Just raise your hand and we can do that. Yeah, or Juliana can let me know if anybody does raise their hand, because if I move back to the Blackboard window, then I have, then, then that's the only screen that you'll see. Um, I'm actually yeah. happy to take these and have somebody jump in and correct me. I am 100% perfectly okay, I think, with being partly wrong on, on the record. Um, I think of data mining as the fact that most of the platforms that we use for education and most of the digital platforms that we use generally are extractive in their nature. And so they are always um, both passively and actively collecting data on our clicks, our habits, our practices, all of those things. Does anybody want to take that a little further than I did or are we okay to move on there? There's a lot more to it, and I'm sure that there is probably somebody here whose specialty this is, which is why I'm always wary of treading on toes. But data mining, the fact that everything we're using is, is gathering data on us. Biometric data. I have a story about biometric data. <clears throat> about three years ago, I got a Fitbit. I'm not a terribly active person, but the Fitbit collects biometric data on me in the sense of how much do I sleep? How many steps do I take a day? Um, it also, of course, is doing significant amount of data mine, mining while it does that. Literally the week before everything went on lockdown, my the last of my Fitbit chargers, um, I smelled a burning smell while I was charging my Fitbit and realized that the it had um, shorted out and um, was starting to burn. And so I put that in the garbage and thought to myself, because we're trying in my house not to buy anything from Amazon, um, 
this year. Uh, so we, I thought, oh, well, I'll get to a store and get myself a new Fitbit charger. Um, guess what? I don't have a Fitbit charger. I have no idea if I'm taking any steps, if I'm sleeping or any of those things. And frankly, it's been kind of freeing. Um, TOS. Anybody got that? Anybody throw it in the chat, Juliana? Yeah, so we've got Autumn yeah. who's yeah. raised her hand and I've given her the mic. Terms of service. Terms of service. Yay, now show, in the chat, and I won't be able to see it, but Juliana will. How many people here have actually ever read the entire terms of service for anything? Do we have a resounding amount of yeses? If, if so, I'm very impressed. <laughs> I, I can't see. Juliana, can you tell me what you're seeing? Because I can't see it. Uh, there is an amazing uh, a cascade of no, no for some things. Uh, okay. Try to once. No, 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 fan, Martin Weller, okay. actually. Uh, I feel better Ava, about George Roberts, and. Thank you. Know. So, the funny thing about terms of service, this past year I did a project which I'll be talking about tomorrow uh, around the same time with Dave Cormier and Nick Baker from the University of Windsor. And we looked at terms of service for a variety, about 20, 25 different ed tech tools so that um, we could do short reviews on them for a project called the open page. And we discovered that they're not really meant to be read. Um, trying to teach Bachelor of Education students how to read them was like trying to teach law. And it, they're intentionally long and obfuscating. Right to be forgotten. I'll take that one quickly, but my understanding is that it is a conversation around um, whether particularly uh, people online and in education, particularly students, have the right to exist in spaces without leaving permanent traces that can follow them around for, for their lives. Um, learning analytics. Anybody? Uh, uh, the GDPR appeared and the people is saying that actually uh, something done not to work, right to be forgotten, Bonnie. Right. Some comments. Thank you. Lots yeah. of comments. Lots of impressions and comments. Great. And learning analytics, there are analytics in just about any platform that you use. One of the, I was, I was blogging 10 years ago when Google Analytics started to become popular and suddenly you could see what is the reach of your post, how many people and where are they and learning analytics gives us the same kind of engagement information on spaces that we're teaching in, um, particularly if they're an LMS, um, but then there is also the whole data mining, datafication, what do we do with that information, who owns it question, um, that is important for us as educators to be thinking about. And the last one that I threw in there was Amazon Ring, because that's been a particular kind of focus of some of my research work this year. Um, I don't know how far that has permeated in um, the UK or continental Europe, but here in North America, it's a big hit. And my own mayor here in Windsor, Ontario, wants to be the first Canadian mayor to attach our own police system, or at least did before the pandemic, to Amazon Ring, which is not just, it's a video doorbell, but it's also a video doorbell attached to a social media system by which if you collect video from your front porch of a suspicious person, and I use that term very much in scare quotes, um, walking in front of your house, uh, then you can immediately send that to the police if, if they're interested in receiving it without them having to go through the um, warrant process that currently exists around surveillance video. I did see something funny since we all got kind of locked down that, um, you know, please don't, please don't share video of that suspicious person. It's just your neighbor, but without their hair extensions or without, without um, the makeup on that you're accustomed to seeing them in. Um, but realistically, that's always been the problem with 
something like surveillance video is that actually the people that we tend to think are suspicious is often a very racialized um, and biased perspective on society. And the people that we're calling suspicious are often our neighbors nonetheless. Um, so those are just some a, a quick survey of that piece. The next yes, slide there were quick. Lots of, um, sorry, lots of interactions about learning analytics and now uh, coming out. Yes, uh, Javier also adding something about learning analytics and, and something about the Amazon ring that uh, it looks that our audience is really concerned about learning analytics. Uh, big issue on. Great. I own the, the following smart devices, and this is just for you. If you do own anything that you think of as smart, uh, throw it in here, please. Um, I'm really curious if anyone has like the smart fridge. Uh, I, I don't, um, or the smart thermostat, but uh, sometimes again, in this new time when I'm not going out grocery shopping, I'm pretty aware of what's in and not in my fridge, but that's new for me. Okay, Google Home, smart, lots of phones, Amazon Echo, Alexa, someone has a ring, smart meter, tablet but the kids stole, isn't that the truth? Smart weighing scales, oh, I wouldn't want that right now, oh my, no, no, cookies have become a food group in my, um, in my home and in my life. We'll take 30 more seconds if folks just want to add anything else in here. This is really interesting. I appreciate this because it's just helpful for us to get a sense of, of what people have invested in or are using. Fire stick. Fitbit. Okay, great. I'm going to move us on. I want to work with a new digital platform. I do the following regarding data. Nothing. Somebody will help me figure it out or a check with my institution, RE guidelines, or I Google the TOS terms of service and glance at them, or I read the terms of service carefully and crowdsource, in other words, turn to my digital network, any additional implications. And I know a lot of us have, may have had new platforms thrown at us just in the past couple of weeks. Um, I've been seeing a lot of concerns coming out around Zoom and people who are being asked to use Zoom, but also realizing some of the data implications of Zoom. Um, but to be fair, and this, this comes out the same as just about any room that I've seen, often when we're told to use something, eh, somebody will help us figure it out. And that may be as far as we go. Coming up for five minutes, Bonnie. Okay, that's great. And we'll take another 15 seconds here. So a bond the chat is really rich of a uh, lot of interventions connecting the use of, of uh, several platforms in education, the concern about the data tracking and the way if this could be used for good uh, it, to some extent. Very few interventions convince about most of the people is convinced about the contrary, the problems and, and, and of course the surveillance enacted by these platforms. Excellent. The last question that I want to ask, if folks could just throw in on the screen, EdTech tools I've been trying out or using more due to COVID-19 include. And if anybody has anything to throw in there, that would be much, much appreciated. Flipgrid, Zoom, fair enough. I've, it's been really interesting because my institution has Blackboard Collaborate, which we're on right now, but wow, do we seem excited about using Zoom in my faculty. Um, Microsoft Teams, Blackboard Collaborate, Jitsi, Mumble. Jitsi. Yeah. yeah, Big Blue Button, that's a Canadian tool. We've stayed away from new tools. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to give folks 30 more seconds and then we're going to come back just so we can, can wrap up. Thank you very, very much for contributing to this, folks. It just it helps us get a sense. What what Juliana and I would like to do is net from here design a survey for educators, both within the open community and also within less digitally active communities, 
to with an eye towards eventual faculty development around and professional development around data literacies and helping educators kind of make sense of what can and should we be looking at and how should we be supporting faculty to build their literacies around these data concerns with the tools that we use. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing now and go back to the main screen and Juliana, I'm just going to throw the file, uh, the slides back on. Okay. Um, if we get the chance, it takes a second with okay. Collaborate. And okay. So really, we just wanted to open it up. Um, and I know that the discussion has already been happening in the chat. But if folks happen to want to con keep contributing to the chat, or share or take the mic. Any other senses beyond sort of faculty development PD or specifics for faculty development PD about how we can build educators' data literacies? And I'm reading. Uh, so I think the concern is going very much, Bonnie, uh, again, uh, learning analytics, because uh, it is becoming uh, an overall concern, uh, the way that um, there is uh, there are companies developing products basing over the data track it over students. And, and the thing is that some of the people is convinced that this has to stop absolutely, whereas uh, in, in other cases, there, there are contributions believing that educational research and joint advancement in, for example, um, participatory designs, engaging people uh, could could have uh, an impact. But for this, is for sure, uh, there are literacies to be developed uh, to engage with this uh, participatory developments. And that makes sense. I, I think one of the things that many of us are concerned about, particularly at this moment when suddenly online is getting way more attention than it has before, is who's waiting in the wings to monetize this, to corporatize this, to, to profit off it. And so we need to be particularly data literate at this moment because I think we're about to see a, a fairly significant um, shift in that. I think our time is up, so we just want to say thank you. Juliana and I are on uh, Twitter. If anybody wants to continue this conversation, thank you so much for uh, connecting with us today. And um, we're going to pass it on so that the next team gets their opportunity. That it was great to have all those comments, and uh, I'm really sad that all this richness it's, it's difficult to, I mean, to get engaged and have a long conversation. So, we keep on going on, on Twitter. Thank you very much for all of you here. That's great, thanks ever so much, both.